Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mihir Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to learn how to solve numerical problem consisting of holding period and annualized rate of return under the chapter portfolio analysis and selection under the subject security and portfolio management also known as SAPA. Now, again, this is one of the most important topic for all the TY BBI students, those who are appearing for semester six. Okay. Um, this is the third part of this particular chapter, which was portfolio analysis and selection. The first one was based on expected return and standard deviation. The second one was beta and covariance. The third is holding period and analyze rate of return. So now let us see how to solve this particular sum based on holding period and analyze rate of return. Okay, now let us see how to calculate the holding period return and the annualized rate of return under the chapter risk and return analysis. This is the third part of this chapter. The first one was based on expected return and standard deviation. Second is covariance and beta and third is holding period return and the analyzed rate of return. Now, in order to solve the sum first, let us see what are the various steps that are required to be considered before solving the sum. So the steps that are there are first you need to calculate the purchase price. Second, you calculate the dividend. Third, the bonus. Fourth, the selling price. Fifth, we use the formula for finding holding period return. And last, we find the annualized rate of return. Now, this is a complete set of steps that are required to solve the sum. Now, in each and every sum, all these things won't be given. But so we are going to take one comprehensive sum which will have all the things. Now, for example, if a sum does not have bonus share, so the step number three will get skipped out. If it doesn't have dividend, step number two gets skipped out. But these are all the steps that needs to be followed. So we are going to take a one sum which has each and everything from top to bottom. All the values will be there. Okay, so based on the question, you can, you know, you'll have to read out the question once and based on the question, you can omit the step according to whatever detail have been given. If nothing is given, no detail, you know, each and every details are given. Then this is the step that we need to follow. Okay, we'll read the question first. Mr. Max purchased 1000 shares of ABC Limited at the rate of rupees 100 each on 1st Jan 2009. He paid brokerage rupees 500. In 2010, he received bonus in the ratio of 3 to 5. He received dividend from the company as follows. So there are two dividends which have been given. Then he sold all the shares in Jan 2010 at 135 rupees each and he paid a brokerage of 875 rupees. Calculate the holding period return and the annualized rate of return. Now if you look, the sum has something related to purchase. It has bonus, it has dividend and it has the values of sales. Along with that, there are some brokerage also involved. Now always remember brokerage on purchase, we add brokerage and on sales, we will less brokerage. Okay. Brokerage gets always added to purchase and it always gets subtracted from sales. Now let us see how to solve the sum. Okay. Now. As per the steps, the very first thing that we need to calculate is the purchase price. So step number one. So we will first find the purchase price. Now purchase price is given that Mr. Max purchased 1000 shares of 100 each. So it will be 1000 shares of 100 each. So that comes to rupees 1 lakh. But the issue was he has also paid 500 for the shares. Okay, he has paid rupees 500 uh, as a brokerage. So that brokerage rule is on purchase part we always add brokerage. So we will add brokerage of rupees 500. So my total purchase price is nothing but now one lakh rupees one lakh 500. Okay, that's my purchase price or it can also be called as price at the beginning okay we'll keep it as price at the beginning that is nothing but the purchase price at the start so number one is done second we need to calculate the dividend second is dividend now 
in the question they've already given a dividend that he has received dividend for two years for 2009 and 2010 so dividend is equal to rupees 500 plus rupees 750 which comes to rupees 1250 so that's our second value that we have already found we found the purchase price we have found the dividend next is you need to calculate the bonus shares so third we'll find the bonus shares Now always remember in order to find bonus is always better to do a small working that will be held and got. In the question is given that uh, in 2010 he received bonus in the ratio of 3 for every 3 is to 5 means you are going to get 3 shares for every 5 shares held. So if you have 5 shares you will be getting 3. Now how many shares do we actually have? Now at the start we have 1000 shares. So for 1000 it will be how much? Okay, so we'll have to cross multiply. So it will be 1000 into 3 that is 3000. 3000 divided by 5 we will get the value of bonus as you know 3000 divided by 5 is 600 shares. So we have bonus of 600 shares. So now remember we had 1000 at the start plus now we got 600 bonus shares. So in total now we have 1600 shares. So we'll note down here now total number of shares is equal to 1000 plus 600 which comes to 1600. The next step is now we need to calculate the selling price. So step number 4 we'll find the selling price. So selling price, now here they have given you, you sold all the shares for 135. Now we have total 1600 shares and we are selling it for 135 rupees each. So 1600 into 135, that comes to approx 2,16,000. Again, there is some brokerage which was paid. On purchase, we add brokerage. So on sale, we will be, we, you know, we will have to subtract the brokerage, so less brokerage. Okay, the brokerage value was 875, so it will be less. So my total selling price will be 2 lakh 16,000 minus 875, which comes to 215125. We got the purchase, and it this is also known as we can also known that the you know write this as price at the end. Okay, price at the beginning is purchase, price at the end is your sale. Now. Once we have found the selling price, now we come to our actual formula that is holding period return is equal to, we'll know the formula first, that is price at the end minus price at the beginning plus dividend upon price at the beginning into 100. So your price at the end was 215125 that is the selling minus price at the beginning was 1,500 dividend was 1,250 upon price at the beginning that was 1,000 into 100 now by solving this values okay so we have two like one five one so we have two one five one two five minus one zero zero five double zero plus one two five zero divided by one like five hundred into hundred the value comes to one one five point two nine something so we'll round it up to three zero percent so my HPR is 115.30. Now last step, we need to find the annualized rate of return. So the annualized rate of return is nothing but the HPR divided by the, the holding period. So in our case, it was 115.30 divided by for how many years did you hold? Now here they are giving you a dividend for two years. So 2009, 2010. So for two years, 
we have held it so a holding period uh, the annual rate of return will be 115.30 divided by 2 which comes to 57.65 percent so with that you know the sum based on holding period return and annualized rate of return comes to an end okay so these are the steps that you have to follow very simple sum now it don't necessary that in the sum they might have bonus if it's not there ignore the bonus part okay if not dividend not there ignore that part so it goes in the order this is full fledged sum okay whatever is not there you can ignore that particular step so that was the third part uh, in the chapter risk and return analysis i hope everyone has under understood how to calculate the holding period return and how to calculate the annualized rate of return with that, we will be ending the video here. Thank you very much.